Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the .NET Capstone Project of Rapid Card. It is presented by Braden Sparks, Jermaine Vang, Robert Lillyblad, and myself, Tashana Bell. So on today's agenda, we will be discussing the project introduction, the primary goals, our team contributions. We will ob ob obviously do a live demo for you guys, the application timeline, and a course overview. So for our introduction, Robert Cart Grocery Delivery Service was founded by the Charlie Group in May 2022. We are a team of junior web developers trained by the Dev10 Software Bootcamp core located in both Dallas, Texas and the Twin Cities, Minnesota area. The overall goal was to create an easier way for consumers to support local family owned stores by ordering groceries or household items to be brought right to their doorstep with rapid delivery. Here is how it works. You choose your favorite local store, add items to your cart, check out and let our rapid dashers take it from there. It's as easy as one, two, three. All right, guys, my name is Braden. Uh, I'll be taking over the primary goals for our project. So the functionality we want to include was um, users' ability to sign up or log in and remain logged in during their session. They can browse during a session, select groceries and household goods they'd like to add to their cart. They can place an order, come back later, and fill it out. Uh, you can view your account information, order history. It also breaks it down to individual goods and items for each order. And then our admin accounts are able to manage all of the goods directly from the front end without touching the database directly. And I'll talk about some of our team contributions. Uh, I worked on the schema a little bit uh, with help from John and the other, or Robert and the others. And then uh, the DAL, uh, I worked on the address, order items and card items repositories. I also wrote the controllers and models for the same uh, repositories. And then on the front end, I got to touch a lot of the components, some of the styling, but the primary things would be the profiles page and the login page. So hello everyone, my name is Jimang Vang and the contributions I did to this project is uh, in the back end, I really worked with the uh, items and cart entities all the way from the interfaces and the repository to the web API controllers. On the front end, I mainly assisted with functionality. Uh, this is with buttons with the search bar, uh, as well as the order list that we have and help style the web app. Um, on the back end, I worked um, with the uh, Dreads repository, the test entity framework, the interface model, and the controller, of course, using the CRUD um, fundamentals. I also assisted with the exception handling of the user input to make sure the at and dot symbols um, would throw an error if the user does not place that in there. As well, um, in the front end, um, I was um, one of the teammates that works with the welcome page, um, we formulated that with the tail end CSS. All right, uh, my name is Robert Lilliblad. Um, I worked with Braden to build out our database schema as well as the scripts to populate it. Um, on the back end, I worked on items, users, and categories. Um, and then the rest of the time I spent working on the front end, um, jumping around a lot, but basically just working in the shop, the cart, and the order history. And now I'm gonna take you all through a quick live demo. Um, so as a new user, you will jump into our landing page here. Um, we have a sign up button and the stretch goal was to have multiple locations or multiple stores supported at the moment. Um, we have one store, so these links will all take you to the one uh, shop. Uh, but as a new user, you'd probably want to sign up. So we click the sign up button uh, and we'll just do a demo. And I'll just do demo at gmail.com with a fake phone number. And I'll do a test as my password. So you can see I'm now logged in, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and we're in the shop. So each item in the shop has a stock, a name, a price, as well as an image. <clears throat> and um, they also have an add to cart and a increment or decrement count. So I could add like three items of this. And if I go in cart, oh, uh, let's try that again. 
Okay, yeah. Um, you can see I have two lines in here. I can also remove it or I could change the, the quantity within here and that's live updating in the database as well as updating the um, total price of the cart and the total price of the cart with the shipping cost. So, and I can also remove this. Um, so I'll go ahead and make a fake order real quick. Um, submit the order with the checkout button. We can see that the order has been submitted to the back end um, or the database, I should say. Um, and now I can go to my user profile and I can view my account information as well as the orders in my account. Um, obviously, we have the one order we just made um, with the date and the order number. That's um, order number in general. So there's been previous orders. So that's why it says 10. Um, and then a list of all the orders with their images and stuff um, within the order summary. Um, oh, another thing I want to show you guys real quick is, um, so let's say I add something to my cart and I log out. Uh, I believe I did demo at gmail.com with test. If I come back into my cart, um, the items are still persisting within the cart. So, um, and then last but not least, we have a few um, admin features so we can edit an item. So let's say I want to edit this to say uh, red wine instead of wine. Uh, and I want to change the price to uh, $50 instead of 32. And I'll leave everything else the same because um, it'll get rid of the picture if I don't. So if I change that, it leaves everything that I left, but it also, uh, like for example, the stock and the um, image, but it changed the name as well as the price. Um, and I can also add items. So let's say I wanted to add some cherries. I will go ahead and just do test. Uh, let's say they're $10. We have 10 of them and I'll go ahead and grab this um, image of cherries here and paste that in. If I submit that, we should come down and well, we already had one in there, but there's a second one. And then I can also go in and delete those. So uh, we could delete, add and edit items as an admin. Um, and then also one last thing as a user, you can search for um, items here. So if I type in flower, it should pull up um, only the flower because that's the only name that corresponds with that search. So um, yeah, that's it for the demo. I will bring us back to the slides here. I believe this is Gming here, so. Yep, so this is kind of our application timeline of how we plan this whole web app and how we wanted everything to function. So of course, beginning phase is the planning phase of how we wanted everything to look like. So this is with our diagrams, with our wireframes and really kind of structuring the whole layout of the application. Uh, next off, we wanted to go into our database and make sure that was created first since that was our foundation of our whole web app. Um, so we wanted to make sure this was solid before we started coding uh, the front end or back end. Afterwards, the next two steps, the development and testing kind of intertwines. Uh, we initially started with completing or completing most of our back end where we tested and then that's when we transitioned to our front end. Um, as well as when we or while we were doing our back end, we realized we had to add more things. So we had to implement, test that stuff, and then go back to the front end to make sure everything worked to where we are now at our finished product of what we have now. So to end our presentation, we're just going to answer a few questions. Um, so the first question is, what new task experience uh, have I learned from working in a team setting? The number one thing I would say is to communicate and to communicate the right way. That means to not overlap each other as well as letting everyone know where you are and what you're working on daily. Uh, the second question is what's a key foundation that I've learned during this whole bootcamp with Dev10? Um, what comes to my mind here is to be able to work under pressure. We've learned a lot of content within a short amount of time. So that meant that you had to be comfortable working independently when you do fall behind. Um, what new tasks I experienced working in a team setting? Um, the number one thing that I experienced was the support that I received from my counterparts. Um, being a career changer, coming from a banking and finance background, they were able to just really help me and support me as I continuously learned. Even through the capstone project, I, I was still learning new different ideas and concepts that they were able to help me really just formulate and to um, just bring it um, Fourth, um, also I learned a big part of communication. If we did not communicate, 
we would have been behind. We wouldn't have been able to have everything just fall into place. So we just kept our constant communication throughout the day. Um, even in the evenings, um, we, ch we checked on each other to just make sure that our parts um, of the project, of our contributions were, we were able to complete it. And if there was any issues that, you know, we just came in and just um, worked together on that. What are some of the key foundations I've learned during the Dev 10 software bootcamp? The number one thing is to work under pressure. Um, this is completely new to me. Um, so I was expecting it to be rigorous, but wasn't expecting it to be, to be so rigorous. Um, I really enjoyed um, just learning from my um, instructors, enjoy their patience with me, um, and then also the avenues that uh, Dev 10 has provided me as a career changer with the support for my other classmates and um, to know that I, I'm able to, you know, make this career change and succeed as well. Just to echo everyone else, um, the biggest takeaway, I think, working in this team setting was just you can never have too much communication, especially after we moved on from the planning phase. It was important to keep up with Teams and Zoom and GitHub and just reach out as much as possible. And then uh, what Dev10 has really shown me is just um, as a recent student, I worked on small projects, you know, a couple of files at a time and never really got the idea of the, the large scope that a project with multiple layers can have. And it was great to get that experience. All right. And um, for me, things I've learned working on this team, um, I feel like our source control using Git went really well. Um, and it was kind of my first team that I've worked on where it did go well. So it really opened my eyes to the power of Git. Um, and I've also learned how to manage different tasks, especially like on the front end when people are working in the same files and um, there's a lot of overlap, how to manage those tasks and not step on each other's toes, which also kind of ties in with uh, Git source control. But um, as far as the foundations I've taken away from Dev10, um, I feel like I'm coming away with a much better understanding of like uh, web application architecture and like I have a new perspective on all the different layers and components now that I understand like I guess all like pretty much every line of code in there right like you just you're able to view it differently. Um, and I feel like I'm coming away from this boot camp with a pretty strong foundation in C sharp SQL and react. Um, and I also feel like I've better learned how to teach myself um, new languages, frameworks, and um, libraries and things like that. So yeah, uh, I think it is time for questions if you have, have any. Excellent. Thank you, Braden, T, Rob, and Jimeng. Um, great job with your project and presentation. You know, over the last couple of years, I feel like we've all been more inclined to have things delivered to us. So it's pretty cool that you guys built a project around that idea. Um, the visual design of your site looks really good. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that what that design process looked like? Well, honestly, it was um, a huge headache for me because um, I was not really much familiar with CSS, especially Tailwind CSS. So that brought out the resilience in my personality where I was learning something as I was creating a project. Um, so moving at a fast pace and um, understanding how tail when CSS worked, how it was a particularly similar to CSS, but it just kept everything uniform um, and just really um, stopped that redundant um, uh, length of code. Um, so I feel really good that I it was able to learn that um, through, um, of course, the resources that depth and provided, but also with my team prior experience, they were able to, to jump in and just share feedback in that area. Nice, well, again, great job. It looks really nice. Um, Steve in chat says, really well done. Love the realization on importance of leveraging your teammates and teamwork. So good job with that guys and, and describing um, what that meant to each of you. Um, uh, bef uh, B Forsyth, um, not sure what B stands for there. Uh, how did you determine who would be working on each bill? Bill, thank you. <laughs> how did you determine who would be working on each portion of the project or application? So I believe uh, to answer this question, we wanted everyone to have um, some sort of um, contribution per layer of each, uh, you know, from the back end to the front end. So that's how we kind of broke it up upon one another. 
Um, Rob, I'm not sure if you wanted to add some more to this, but. Yeah, I was going to say, um, we basically just started from the database um, kind of as a team. And then when we started breaking apart our back end, everyone took a entity or a table, you could say, and built that out to a controller. Um, and then once we got to the front end, it was kind of just like Wild West, like just get what you can done and, and stuff like that. But yeah, for the back end, it was much more like just grab a grab a DAL class and build it out through the controller. And um, yeah, we each took at least one of those. So, Excellent. Um, if you had more time to work on the project, are there features that you would like to add? Are there things that you would change? Yes, absolutely. Our stretch goal of being able to click on a store, we really, really wanted to do that. Um, we talked about it a lot, um, but uh, that's definitely something we wish we were able to, to just do and just to, to take it to another step that's like more realistic. Because, uh, of course, you do have delivery other delivery service companies, but ours was different in a way that it was for local stores. So, you know, if it was a local store view in this presentation, how would they, you know, take this new idea and would want to implement it for their business? We would have also liked to um, include uh, admins as separate accounts. Right now, all of our accounts are set with admin privileges. We do have a table in the back end to distinguish those. But uh, when we populate our database, we just went ahead um, for debugging and coding purposes, just left them all as admin. Gotcha. Excellent. Um, any other questions? Oh, OK. Uh, Bill has a follow up question. Did you use a standard OAuth framework for your user identity management? So how did how did you guys implement authentication uh, in your, um, your project? Braden can Braden was more hands on with this, but we actually didn't use a framework at all. We all we did it all um, probably the hard way. So yeah, he can probably speak more to that. But yeah, um, we're using bear tokens uh, just to keep track of the authorization. And as far as um, I guess storing passwords and stuff, uh, we're sending the entered passwords uh, to the backend, and they're handling hashing it and comparing it there. So that way we're not storing any of the user's actual passwords. It's all being handled on the back end where the front end can't touch it. All right. Um, well, I think that concludes um, your segment of today's presentations. Congrats on, on getting to this point and finishing the cohort. Um, yeah, and thanks. Thanks again, Braden, T, Rob, and Jimang um, for showing us your project.